Hey everyone, how's it going? So today I wanna to show all of you how to make a really good cu cup of coffee using just your drip machine. So, you know, most people wouldn't consider coffee from one of these to be particularly special. It's your average cup, but coffee is always special, right? And uh, I'm, I'm just gonna show you guys basically how to maximize flavor because we don't always want to be going to, you know, to get that fancy coffee that costs five, six, seven bucks all the time. So what I'm going to show you guys is basically going to be like making a latte. It's not a latte, but like flavor wise, it's almost going to be similar to a latte and you're not spending a bunch of money. All right. So first off, uh, I put the filter in. I got the filter. I like using these brown filters because I don't know, I guess they're more organic. And then uh, we're gonna put water in the coffee maker. Now, in the world of coffee, you don't, you don't measure cups as eight ounces. You measure them as six ounces. Okay, I got just a pinch over six right there. And a perfect cup of coffee usually consists of two cups, two Coffee World cups, all right? So 12 ounces, that would be 12 ounces. 12 ounces will fit perfectly inside this mug. So make sure to grab your favorite mug. I got plenty of mugs. I like this one right here. So a measuring cup, you don't have to have a measuring cup, but just to show you guys that it's six ounces. There's one cup. So second cup, flip it to the ounce side. Yeah, my measuring cup looks dirty. It's not, it's just water spots on it. Can I get a cleaner mug? This one's dirty. There we go, just a pinch over six again. Just the pinch over six, matey. Okay. So that should have given me. Uh, let's turn this around. Sorry, it's kind of hard filming with one hand. Uh, and it's shaking up and down, but that's two right there. It's just a little over two because remember, it was a pinch over six ounces both times that I poured. There you have it, so two cups, okay. Now, usually um, you can use filtered water. You can use water from a water bottle or even tap water. Personally, I like using tap water because I like the tap water that I get here. I think it tastes pretty good, but some places the tap water may not be that good. So. I recommend this. Remember, we're maximizing the flavor of the coffee. And you could go with any kind of coffee, you know, Folgers, your average cup of coffee. Now here's a trick. In the past, I've seen people, you know, you ask them, they tell you, oh, go make us some coffee. And then you ask them, well, how, how many grounds do you put in here? And they're like, I don't know, just fill it about halfway or whatever. But I recommend having a measuring spoon, okay? tablespoon now according to the bag and most uh most coffee products it's usually two tablespoons per cup of coffee or two tablespoons per six ounces now this coffee in particular is what i've got in here it's finely ground if you can see it's kind of fine it's not the finest it's not espresso fine it's kind of in between that and regular, like a regular grind, but this is gonna be pretty strong. So I'm only gonna use, uh, you know, two per six ounces, per six ounces would be four. I'm only gonna do, uh, I'm only gonna do three because I've already done that before and it's a little too strong. It depends on your coffee brand, of course. Sometimes it'll come out really rich, really strong. If that's what you're looking for, then go for it. I like doing three. See, it gives me a nice sized little mound, probably like a third 
of the way filled, maybe a little less than a third. All right. And there's my mixing spoon. I got all my, my things here. Okay. So there's little things and tricks you could you could use, right? So I'm gonna take my also always have a clean uh coffee pot. If it's clean and you don't have residue from like a pot that was made a couple of days ago, it'll taste better because it's clean, good coffee, and it's not gonna mix with the residue in there. Because uh, coffee residue that's days old could kind of get stale or whatnot. So your little trick, guys, get some vanilla, pour in a couple of drops, just like that. You know, just a little. You could you could do more if you want. That's all I use right there, just a little bit. That's gonna add a little more flavor to my coffee. Remember, we're maximizing the flavor. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing started. And I should brew up in about one to two minutes. I've had this coffee maker for a while. Sometimes when they're brand new, they brew up like in 30 seconds. See, this one's starting up slow. All right, so our cup of coffee is ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off. Usually once it finishes brewing, I leave it I leave it on for like about a minute extra just to get it nice and hot. That way my coffee stays hot longer. Another tip too is you don't want to <clears throat> you don't want to leave this sitting here with the burner on for too long. Because what happens is it burns the flavor out of the coffee. And if you've ever been to your break room at work or even to some some cheap coffee house somewhere and it's they've had their coffee sitting on on the warmer for like a long time you can smell it like it smells burnt sometimes and when you taste it it just it doesn't taste that good i mean some people don't care some people you know you know they, they, they've always had it that way and it, that's fine you know but you'll taste the difference trust me you don't want to burn your coffee up you want to preserve the flavor so here we go always pour it slow because i've noticed when you pour fast It'll drip down the, the wall or the side of the pot and end up making a mess. See that? That's 12 ounces right there, okay? There's plenty of room for cream and sugar. Now, me personally, I always like to get a quick little taste of it before I add that stuff in, okay? delicious it's a little bit sweet it's got like you know toasty woody notes okay i'm not a coffee review expert so here's what we're gonna do to make it seem like a latte flavor wise all right so all you're gonna need is some creamer of your choice i like vanilla or hazelnut but i'm trying out this peppermint mocha some whipped cream and some ground cinnamon and of course sugar white brown sugar either or i like to go with just one spoon and this is a small spoon this is one of those bigger spoons because in all honesty that's just my preference i don't like it to be too sweet plus the all this other stuff is going to sweeten it up even more that and too much sugar isn't good, right? We're trying to cut back. Okay. So, pour in a good little generous amount. I don't know, I like my coffee to look light, almost, almost beige. Not beige is too light, but about that much right there, okay? Whipped cream. Oh, I don't like how this whipped cream comes out. There's some whipped creams, if you can find the right one, that come out nice and creamy and soft. This one comes out all rough looking. And then a little bit of cinnamon. Cinnamon and vanilla are 
perfect. There we go. So there you have it. This right here should taste very similar to a latte, even though it's not a latte. And yeah, I mean, all this stuff will cost you a few bucks, but you'll get dozens of cups of coffee out of this. So you're really getting a delicious cup of coffee for probably less than 50 cents a, a, a cup, you know, a mug. And uh, yeah, you're not paying through the roof prices. So that's it, everyone. I hope you all like this video and I hope you all start making maximized flavor coffee cups and enjoying your mornings even more. Till next time.